Hey, I'm Doug from Zachlin Farm. In this video, I'm going to show you how to graft tomatoes, eggplants, and cucumbers. And if you watch the whole thing, I'm sure that you'll have success in grafting on your farm. And actually, I'm especially certified to do this because my last name, Zachlin, uh, translates in Serbian to the act of sort of cutting a throat, which is pretty graphic, but that's basically what we're doing. But uh, don't worry, I'll show you how to do it. And in the end, you'll have really healthy plants. Okay, so if we're talking about grafting, a good place to start would be uh, actually where we started was just ordering our seeds through Johnny's and they'll give you this sort of informational packet about top grafting tomatoes. And in here it's got a lot of the details um, that you'll need and if you had nothing else but this, you'd have pretty good success I think. A big part of getting the grafts to work is your timing. So you want to make sure that your diameter of your rootstock and your scion are the same diameter. So the rootstock tends to grow faster than the scion, so you want to start your rootstock um, a little bit earlier. Okay, so we get our grafting clips from Japan Agri Trading. So it's actually getting shipped from Japan. You're going to kill some plants, and that's okay. So maybe you want to just have a little bit of extra, a little margin for error. Rootstock and my scion and if I can keep this area clean and tight so I'm not reaching over to get one thing and the other thing it's gonna be a lot faster. Once you start grafting you want to be pretty speedy at the same time being as cautious as possible because once you start grafting they're gonna to want to start to wilt and you want to finish your flat and get them into the healing chamber as fast as possible. If you have them growing in the middle of the day and they're evapotranspirating and they're alive and they're you know doing its thing uh, and you take them inside and you try and graft them while well, they're already doing that thing you want to before they're in that position of, of actively trying to grow put them somewhere cool and low light so that when you make the cut they're kind of already a little bit dormant your diameter decreases as you go up on your rootstock and on your scion and so you kind of want to choose where you're going to cut along here. With the rootstock, it's nice to cut as high as possible because when you go to plant this in the ground, if you've got your cut down here and you plant it in the ground, the scion will try and bypass the rootstock and, and re-root into the ground. So I like to cut it as high as possible, but the main pr um, priority is to make sure that the diameters match. The first thing that I'll do after cutting this is throw this on the ground because it's too easy to put it down and then forget what's what. I mean, in this case, we're grafting eggplant, so you're not going to mix it up. But if you're doing tomatoes on tomatoes, then just throw that on the ground. And the other thing that you can do is like when you're going through here and picking the one that you think is going to match the best is you could say, OK, this one's going to match, but I don't know exactly where. So you could pre-cut it. Once you've got it here, you can kind of compare the two and say, OK, well, Actually, I want to cut this as low as possible. Maybe I'll cut off true leaf, and then I've got my grafting clip. This grafting clip you just slide in. Some of them are more clip-like. Push it together until you get good contact. So this is the reason why the clip is clear, is that you can actually see that it's got good contact and that uh, the angle is correct. And I like to push into the point where it kind of you can see it's pushing the water out and it's a nice clean contact. There's not too much green. There might be a little bit of green on the bottom or the top of the graft, but that's fine. If you got most of the contact, you want to keep that um, connection as clean as possible, which is why when we started off, we said make sure and keep your work area clean. I'm using that guide on the clip here to get my angle right so that when I cut the other one, they match up. So one of the things we like to do is space out the rootstock. So can you see here, we've got uh, a rootstock in every other cell and that just gives us a bit of room to work. Because as you're in here clipping, you don't want to be bumping the ones that were just clipped. When you're starting, it's nice to just do one and one, one and one and one, so that uh, you're not getting too far ahead of yourself. So you would just make one cut and then graft onto it and then as you get better you could do a row and then a row and then a, and then you could as you get good I kind of do two at a two rows at a time you you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself and chop the whole thing because now they're just sitting there without anything on them okay Laura's taking over so she's gonna finish this flat 
Once we have a flat build, then it's going to come over here to these germ chambers. Germ chambers, like I said earlier, 100% humidity. And this one's set to 25.3. So we've got this, uh, a tank here of water with a hot water heating element. So it kind of evaporates the water and creates a humid environment. Uh, and it's going to hang out there for 24 hours. Like, I was really surprised at the, at the tomatoes that you guys grafted two weeks ago and they were getting wilty and I was expecting that they were going to not survive and like all of them survived. I think you guys lost maybe three out of 300 plants that you grafted or more than 300 plants. It's a pretty great success rate. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more about the healing conditions which I mean obviously it's the grafting technique and having good grafting contact but it's um, having like good healing chamber so like our germ chamber and then our healing room is really important to the process and be able to control that temperature and humidity okay now that we finished our first flat of eggplant grafted onto dro make sure that you have it labeled and then you want to cover it with a dome you don't necessarily have to do this but when you go to transfer it out of the healing chamber and under the lights you're going to want to have a dome on it so that uh, you keep the humidity relatively high and another trick that we do is just to fog the inside of the dome and the flat uh, with a sprayer, um, I'm just using a little handheld one, to get the humidity as high as possible. So yeah, let's put this in the healing chamber. So I like to uh, cut, cut it low, just off, and then get off the cotyledon. And the cotyledon, be careful that you don't go too far. You can kind of go 90% of the way and then crack it off and I like to take all of these off and then my final cut is the angle. Um, I just find that this way specifically towards myself I can see the angle the best and I'm ensured that I've got a nice straight line there. What you don't want to do is cut it this way like because if you've got a weird angle like that then it's going to be a pocket of air in the joint and that's what you want to try and avoid. But if you screw it up you can always come up a little higher. Um, if you cut these both to a blunt of an angle, when you go to put the clip on here, it'll kind of be e more easily for, the, for it to kind of squish apart. The sharper the angle, the more surface area and space for the joint to heal. Here, these are different cells. These are like little bud cells. So you want to try and make the cut so that you don't have any bud cells right here. So you, it's, it's very, very close to chopping the whole cotyledon off. And I think that's the skill of this uh, process. If you have to cut it again, you can. Uh, I just want to talk about our experience with growing cucumbers. And so in the past, what we've done is had succession of uh, cucumbers. That was fine. But we also had uh, our first planting was a grafted planting. And then the other plantings weren't grafted. And it was a really cool trial, a uh, very enlightening trial, because our first grafted cucumber outlasted every other succession of cucumbers. So then we got to thinking, well, why even bother with the succession plantings of non-grafted and just get do a whole whack of early season cucumbers and get them in early, and that'll last us the whole season. And get the, the labor of the grafting out of the way early in the season when the labor load on the farm is way lower. Finished grafting my last cucumbers for the season which is great and they've gone into the germ chamber for 24 hours with domes on but vented so that they can breathe in there and then after 24 hours they'll go like the other ones into a room with temperature control and uh, they'll go under some fluorescent tubes with one tube uh, screwed in up to four and then we'll be gradually venting them and then once they're in there under full light without the domes on then they come back out into the greenhouse here uh, and then from that point they'll be treated like all the other plants. If you have questions that weren't addressed in the video just put them in the comments and I'll try and respond to that and happy farming. What that it's like the scariest thing you're gonna do but really worth it in the end. Just yeah. gotta push through the fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>